wow, you guys can see like when they're fresh, how like crazy blue that is. That's the color that you're looking for. That is just a super vivid, vivid, vivid blue. All right, we've got a box. Large prisms of brilliant blue, but are these too beautiful to be true? Okay, let's see what's up. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant blue. Gotta be very careful here. Oh, I'm originally from Kentucky, so the first thing I thought of was UK blue. This looks like a mineral called chalcothite. It does occur naturally, but it's a pretty fickle mineral. You're really gonna see it in its natural form in smaller, less well-shaped prisms. When you see prisms like this, it probably is a synthetic. So chalcothite, it's a hydrous copper sulfate. It's a two and a half on the Mohs scale, so it's very, very soft. It's in the triclinic crystal system, and it has a very interesting relationship with water. So it's actually water soluble, meaning when it gets exposed to water, it dissolves. And then when the water evaporates, it can recrystallize again. And it's often found in mines. So copper sulfides get exposed to air and then they oxidize and it forms this blue kind of crust. Our team is 99% sure that this specimen is synthetic, but this specimen, on the other hand, we know is natural. And we actually have sections of it where you can see it has been exposed to water, and sadly, it's deteriorating. Often, you'll see mineral collectors coat it with a mineral oil or a lacquer to protect the specimen from this type of deterioration. As you can see, even in its natural state, it has this amazing, vibrant, bright blue color. This one comes from Arizona. There are a lot of copper mines in Arizona, and a lot of the fine calcanthite comes from La Paz, Arizona. On this channel, we've talked before about tests for gemstones, and what are some different and interesting ways that you can identify gemstones? There is a lick test for calcanthite that it tastes kind of sweet and metallic at the same time. I'm not sure that I want to experience that, but I'm not going to anyway because calcanthite is actually not safe for you to ingest. If you look on lists of deadliest minerals, sometimes it'll show up there. It actually is most dangerous if you ingest or inhale it. The surface exposure is not gonna be very deadly. Actually, calcanthite has some uses in traditional Chinese medicine. It's thought to help the body get rid of excess phlegm or poisons. Some people actually use it externally for inflammation and abscesses. Copper sulfate actually has been used for an antifungal purpose for feet, but they stopped using it because it turned people's feet blue. So a myriad of uses for calcanthite. You go to mineral shows, you'll see a lot of dealers will grow these amazing synthetic calcanthite crystals. So our friend Elizabeth actually grew her own calcanthite crystals and she's going to show you how she did it. We're going to be making one of my favorite, I guess, man-made crystals on the market, which is copper sulfate. Also sometimes referred to as calcanthite. These are like this awesome super electric blue crystal. You can grow clusters or single crystals. People on the internet make it look really easy. I have played with it a little bit. I have not had a whole lot of success. So I will be perfectly brutally honest with you of whether or not this is going the way it's supposed to or if it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Our ingredients that we're gonna use today, we've got our copper sulfate, pentahydrate powder. We have 100 grams of it, which is actually right at about five tablespoons. We've got our beaker, and that's just to help me measure things. And then we've got our mostly hot water. And we're gonna be using about 200 milliliters of it, which is a little bit less than a cup. This is just to make our seed crystals. I'm gonna get blue everywhere. <laughs> this stuff stains everything. So if you don't want it to be stained, don't wear it while you're doing this. We are going to pour in 200 milliliters. Now we are going to stir it in. And you want the water to be like basically almost boiling. So I'm gonna have to filter it because we've got a few little scragglers down in the bottom there and I'm sure you guys can kind of see them. And that's just from it not totally dissolving or 
you having different impurities in it. I want to make this as clean as possible. Like, look at that, that was in there, like a big chunk. So we had a bunch of black speckles in there. I don't know what they are. Essentially, now we wait. We are gonna leave this alone and let it set. So I guess I will see you guys tomorrow. So it has been a single night and we have our seed crystals. So I'm gonna pour off my solution in here. That's pretty cool. We got quite a bit of crystals. I'm looking for like a good cluster and then I'm looking for like a good singular crystal I could grow a whole bunch of crystals off of. Some of these actually break apart really easily. <laughs> I'm getting this stuff everywhere. Oh, well, hello. Right there, at the end of my pinky is a decently sized doubly terminated crystal. I might put a few of these in the bottom of a beaker and let it continue to grow some more. I'll probably have two or three beakers going all at the same time. So if it doesn't work out in one, <laughs> at least you got backup. Let's get our boiling water and um, let's get this party started. Okay, we have like right at 600 with five tablespoons per every two. So five times three is 15. So we got 15 tablespoons. So I'm gonna put 100 milliliters in here and just kind of filter it as I go. I'm gonna put 300 milliliters in this one and we'll go ahead and let it sit. In the past, I've tried this when the water was still hot and I ended up very disappointed when my lovely seed crystals actually just disintegrated into nothing. I'm essentially gonna try to grow bigger seed crystals. So I'm gonna take some of these plates and just put them on the bottom, face up. So that one's done. I may do the same thing with these, just give them something on the bottom to kind of nucleate around. This would be like really awesome. I don't know if you guys can see like all the cool stuff going on with it, but there's a bunch of crystals poking out everywhere. So if it starts to grow, I'd be like super happy. So the bigger crystal can go in here. So yeah, so that's, that's how it's gonna be. It's finally cool enough. I'm gonna put my last crystal in here. Oh, it's not sinking. <laughs> that could be a problem. There we go. We have like three different experiments going here all at the same time. So we're gonna go put these away. I'm gonna leave them alone. And we are going to hope that these crystals grow really well in the next week if we have good news. So unfortunately, we let it go too long. So we had a ton of other stuff going on. We've been filming all this stuff and I kinda, I hate to say forgot to take them out, but I kinda forgot to take them out. So what ended up happening is all of the water evaporated out of these containers. It creates this like skim on top of all of the crystals. But we are going to take care of this today and we are going to make some really pretty awesome gorgeous crystals. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so we've got this guy and as you guys can see, as the water receded, it started creating these like almost skeletal like crystals. So let's see what else we got. It's a big plate in the bottom. It basically made a big thick puck. Look how thick that is. Oh, this is embarrassing. Crystal chick forgets to get stuff out of beaker. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Looks kind of like a flower. Oh, good, okay. This is off the side wall of the beaker, but yeah, it's two crystals put together and that's that's actually really what I wanted with something really nice like this. Okay, so that was harder work than I thought it was. I'm sweating. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is take whichever like really pretty good single crystals or doubly terminated crystals or whatever, and I'm gonna glue them on this rock. Got it from the outside, like, like the drainage ditch. It's limestone. And this is going to go in this beaker and we are going to make a mineral specimen. I wanna break this so I can try to get like some of these bigger crystals to put on here. <laughs> Essentially, I get to design my own mineral specimen. Hot glue is your best friend. Ooh, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. <laughs> I got strings. But yeah, why not? Oh, that was cool. It's kind of neat. The hard part is, is guessing what these crystals are gonna look like once they start getting bigger. Hey, I mean, if these all grew together and made like one huge cluster, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. So what we're gonna do for our next step, we are going to get all of our copper sulfate and to do a mixture of about 100 grams per 200 milliliters of water. Forbidden Kool-Aid. Do not drink this, guys. So we're gonna filter this real quick and it's still really hot, so. Hopefully I don't, you know, wound myself. So this is actually 800 milliliters. So once I put that rock in there, it'll probably be at somewhere around eight to 900. Don't, 
Hold on. That's still pretty hot. I think I need some gloves. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is that is cool enough. Hopefully these won't just like etch away and die. So we're going to drop this in. I have broken so much stuff doing this. And I'm gonna be really sad if I break one of these crystals. Ooh. Ooh, are we gonna get too tall? Ooh, that was really a lot. Ooh. Okay, so it's safe, it's in there. I didn't break it. We are good to go, we're gonna leave it for a while. Hope is that we have really cool crystal growth and nothing falls off, nothing dissolves. Today is the day, so we get to see what our big specimen looks like. Mm. Ah. Oh, that's so cool looking. Oh my gosh. So we have a beautiful copper sulfate. Holy cow. Like I really did not expect all of this druzy all over everything. The crystals got humongous. That's a nice cabinet sized specimen. Copper sulfate and turquoise both get their colors from copper. So that's why they're both this really pretty blue green color. I am really excited to put this guy on my desk. Now remember, for your copper sulfate crystals, you will have to shellac them with something, either clear nail polish or get some kind of spray paint, just something clear because they do react with oxygen over time and they will get kind of a powdery blue cloudiness. Can you guys believe that this started out as just a rock out of the parking lot and some powder? cool. I love experiments. I love getting hands on with gems and seeing what kind of things that we can grow and learn from. And thank you, Elizabeth, for once again bringing us a really fun crystal growing experiment. What other crystals would you like to see us grow? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.